Welcome back to the Bradley Center. Let's see the opening lineups, the starting lineups for tonight. East Carolina and Marquette. We talked about Derek Wiley, Errol Bing, a tremendous rebounder, the conference player of the week a week ago. Two freshmen in the backcourt for East Carolina. Marquette starting five, Terry Sanders, Steve Novak, Scott Merritt, Travis Steiner, and the freshman, Damian Mason. The coaches, Bill O'Haran, in his fifth year now at East Carolina, and Tom Crean, the back-to-back -back Conference USA Coach of the Year in his fifth season at Marquette. George, we're ready to go. This should be a very exciting basketball game. Now, this is gonna be not an easy thing for Marquette to accomplish here tonight against East Carolina. They bring to the Bradley Center a lot of speed and quickness, and Marquette has had a lot of difficulty with that this year. Defense will be the key for Marquette if they play it. They got a good chance, and if they don't, which they have struggled at times defensively. They have to keep this fight. game. You're right, Christopher. They have to keep this game in the 60s. Wiley gives it up down in the post. Big Musa Badian can't convert, and now Marquette gets their first crack. Here's Travis Diener into the front court. too high and East Carolina has it. This is freshman Mike Cook. Wiley the lefty delivers. It's a three-pointer and that of course has been an Achilles heel defensively for Marquette this season and the Pirates with a 3-0 lead. Foul wow, as, as Diener comes to the push. There you see the numbers, points per game, ECU with the edge there, opponent points pretty much even. Free throw percentage, uh, East Carolina is struggling a little bit as Marquette answers. Travis Dina, as he does so often, generates offense when Marquette needs it the most. All right, this is Wiley, we talked about, body on. Freshman Cook working against Diener, and he hits the turnaround jumper, and ECU out to a quick 5-2 lead. Go back, Diener. Diener reloads, plenty on the shot clock, 25 seconds. Marquette has had problems once they get under 10 seconds getting off a high percentage shot. Kick out to the senior Sanders, back to Diener. Travis Steiner has five points, and this game is tied. The conference's leading scorer off to a quick start tonight. With that trademark three ball that we talked about at the top. This has been a pretty good series, George. East Carolina just in the league now for three years, but they've split the last two games. And fans remember last year, Marquette was ranked ninth in the country when they went to East Carolina and lost. So they've split four games over the last two years. Oh, Novak baby hook is not old enough. Long lob ahead. Couldn't control it as they tried to tip it back out. And let's take a look at those numbers again. Had a little trouble getting them to you earlier. There you see it. Points per game, opponents points per game. Not a whole lot of difference between these two teams. Free throw percentage though, East Carolina not very good. And Marquette coming in ranked second in the conference at 74%. So that will bear out if this is a close game down the stretch. Free throws could be an item. We also saw a rebound in there. East Carolina a terrific rebounding team. And there they grab it off the Travis Dieter miss. That's Wiley. The lefty working on the freshman and he hits it. Wiley, as we talked about, very tough customer. Damian Mason has been tough himself since being inserted into the lineup. Scott Merritt, two blocks by Badian, who ranks third in the conference in that department, averaging three and a half per game. Badian padding his statistics, uh, block statistics, early in the contest. There's what we talked about, series tied 2-2. Now, the last meeting, Marquette exacted just a bit of a revenge for that upset loss at East Carolina when they thumped them by 32 points. Well, Conference USA to a team has gotten better over the last couple of years. Not a lot of separation between the teams. Steve Novak again in the post. Can't get it. Gary Sanders kicked once, and Steve Novak just slammed it right into the side of the iron. Marquette beating the offensive boards, having several opportunities at it. Couldn't cash. 
That is a jump ball, and the possession arrow favors Marquette, so they will get a fresh crack at it and a fresh 35. Set out of bounds play. Tom Green does a very good job of good set out of bounds plays. Zola. Whoa. Oh. Musa Badian took a hard tumble out of bounds after a hard foul by Terry Sanders. Badian playing center field that time. Most teams, if they have a difficult time getting in, will throw it all the way back. Badian, 6'10". <laughs> Good jumping ability, playing center field, caught up to that thing. Was hacked in the act, gets himself to the line for two. And right after he left your picture there, he went crashing into the drums of the Marquette Pepke. And maybe affected his rhythm there on the free throw. We told you they're not a terrific free throw shooting team. Body on at 65% for the season, splits a pair there, and it's a three-point advantage for the Pirates. Mason into the front court, rejected by Badian. That's three for him. Adding his stats. What Marquette has to do is give Badian some fakes, some ball fakes, some head and shoulder fakes, and those shot blockers really like to leave their feet. Travis Diener in trouble, gets it back from Sanders. Now Diener on body on. Merritt can't control the pass. Pogo stick action down below. And a bailout foul on the Pirates as the shot clock was getting down into the dangerous territory. To finish the thought, Marquette has to get down low, get that sweet low post position, but they also have to be clever about it. They have to use a variety of moves to get a great shot blocker off of his feet. Terry Sanders looking for room. Rebound tipped out and then a foul on Steve Novak. So East Carolina will get the ball. First foul on Novak. Second on Marquette here in the early going and East Carolina with an 8-5 lead. Marquette getting their fair share of shots, unable to convert, doubling up on East Carolina. Oh, the freshman Mike Cook was standing on the sideline there, so that's a careless turnover by East Carolina, but they're off to a hot start here. 8-5 lead over the homestanding Golden Eagles. Conference USA Basketball will be back right after this. Welcome back to the Bradley Center, East Carolina with a three-point lead. Junior Travis Diener, where would Marquette be without him, George? First in the conference in scoring, first in assists, second in free throw percentage, third in three-point field goal percentage. He's a mid-season candidate for the Wooden Award, and he is one of nine finalists for the inaugural Bob Cousy Award, handed out to the nation's top point guard. Well, as we talked about, he is Marquette's go-to guy. He has an uncanny ability to get to the hoop, to score baskets from everywhere on the floor, particularly in clutch situations. Right, he was clutch to start the game. He hit his first two shots. Since that time, however, Marquette has missed their last 10 field goals. They're 2 of 12 from the field, and they trail 8-5. And it's not for lack of trying, Chris, because Marquette certainly has gotten their share of loose chains and stick-back opportunities, but uh, Mr. Badian has had something to say about that. And they need to be a little more clever offensively. And after all, uh, offense and defense is basically just a game of cat and mouse, move, counter move. So uh, Marquette has to figure out how to work their way around Badian and get some high percentage shots off. Well, we're told right now that the discussion going on at the scorer's table is the officials want to see the first three-point shot credited to Marquette. That, of course, was Travis Diener. He hit a two to start the game, then hit a three to tie the game. That was at 5-5, and I don't know if East Carolina challenged the call or not, but they are looking back at that play. That's what they want to see. Well, uh, with the four minutes into the game, that's highly irregular, I must say, but uh, obviously uh, East Carolina pretty much thought that th that was a two and, and uh, really wanted the referees to uh, check further. There you see Coach Herring. I can't remember a challenge uh, on a shot 
uh, this uh, far away from the actual uh, action. Yeah, that was uh, several minutes ago, game clock wise. Right now we're at just under 16 minutes left in the half. And maybe we've got it here and we'll see what, if there is a dilemma, let's see what it looks like. They gotta be looking for where the feet actually are as far as Travis is concerned. This angle will not show it to us. Yeah, his right foot looked closer to the line than his left foot, but I'm not sure you can see it. If we look from another angle, perhaps we can catch a clue. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that was, I'm not sure why we had a delay for something that was so obvious. The three stands, Marquette trails by three. Here comes Dieter. Mason just inside the strike. Full rebound put back for Damian Mason. There you go, Mason coming on as a freshman, seeing a lot of playing time, has a lot of talent, a lot of athleticism about himself. 11 games as a starter, George, is averaging nearly six rebounds a game. That would be good for number two on the team, so the freshman's confidence is growing. That's going back the other way. Scott Merritt able to draw the charge on Corey Rouse, the sophomore who checked into the game during the last time out. Marquette playing some good defense here in the early going, but again, getting their fair share of shots and they haven't gotten them to fall. East Carolina going to their bench, number 10, Justin. McNeil is now guarding Travis Deer and Felton Rivers, number one, a sophomore from Atlanta. Watch that guy out on the strike. He has been smoking hot in three point range during East Carolina's three game win streak. Up down low, Terry Sanders able to score. The big fella couldn't get there in time. And now Marquette with a one-point lead, their first of the night. Notice Sanders' hesitation that time, looking around, surveying the situation, all clear. Took it up, everybody out, 10 feet. Is that McNeil? This is Rivers. He's the spot with the headband. You hope Marquette doesn't lose sight of him out on the strike. But he is a dangerous spot-up shooter outside. Barion dished to Bing, couldn't get it. Whistle, and a foul on Marquette. Marquette trying to converge after the initial entry pass. Usually the foul is ticketed to a team, come, a team member coming over to help. Uh, in that case, I believe the foul was assessed uh, as a result of that same situation. You got it, George. Terry Sanders picks up his second. Errol Bing misses the free throw. And now first substitutions of the game for Marquette. Joe Chapman, number 32, is into the game. Merritt and Novak head to the bench. Chris Grimm, number 33, who's starting to see some increased playing time here over the last several games. Sanders and Townsend have a propensity to get fouls early for that very reason helping out, rolling over on defense, and uh, usually getting ticketed with the foul. Oh, you're right, Chris. Chris Grimm bringing a lot of energy to the floor and brings a very big presence underneath the hoop. Marcus Jackson, number 35, the junior college transfer in now from Marquette. Big 6'8", strong forward. Has had trouble finding his way here, though, in his first year, I think, for Marquette. Travis Diener pull up jumper. Travis has seven. Marquette has a two point lead. Jackson has had problems picking up the system. Was a junior college All American and was supposedly the answer underneath, but uh, just hasn't put it all together. Of course, Marquette not only lost Wayne Wade last year, but Robert Jackson, who was a tremendous force in his one season down on the low post. And of course, they, they just haven't been able to replace. No question about it. Dwayne Wade, obviously in the class by himself. I saw him Saturday here against the Bucks. Didn't have a particularly good game, but was played a week in the NBA a couple weeks ago. Body on going baseline here. Watch out for Rivers. That one was way off the mark and now a foul underneath. That's going back the other way. Joe Chapman was helped in his momentum away from that loose ball rebound. First foul on Derek Wiley. Rivers has hit 45% of his three-point shots in the last five games, but that one was well off the mark. 
Back to your point about Jackson. He is sorely missed here. Good pick. Good solid hard pick. Hard and clean. He nearly bent that player in half. Marcus Jackson with that pick. But still, Marquette has yet to get a clean look at the basket. On this possession, now eight on the shot clock. Chapman creating and converting. And Marquette has their biggest lead of the night at four points. Chapman, one of the few players on the team that has the ability to score off of the dribble penetration. Chapman, a starter for the first 14 games, gave up that spot when Damian Mason really emerged. I think Marquette thought by sending Chapman to the bench, they'd be able to get something with the second unit. Hasn't always been there, but he brings some stuff to the table that they certainly need coming off the bench. Yes, he does, and uh, Chapman has the ability to play some good defense, but he's had an up and down last month or so. East Carolina, you see over the last three games during that three game winning streak, look at the points per game, nearly five players averaging double figures. And, and that's, that's why a, they're winning. And that's a tough thing when you also have one of the league's leading shot blockers in that lineup averaging right around 10 points per. It's the first time since they joined Conference USA in their three seasons that they've strung together three consecutive league wins. Also during that time, they're out rebounding teams by seven. So that adds up to wins. Now, the teams that they have beaten are not the upper echelon teams, but only Cincinnati and East Carolina right now are riding three game winning streak. Stolen by Diener. Turnover number four, Karen Bradley into the game. Bradley! Oh, oh. A high archer over body on rebound to Marquette. Marquette doing a good job. Again, I repeat, of crashing the boards, getting second chance opportunities, but they have not been able to convert. They've come away dry several times, and they've certainly gotten their fair share of shots. It's the number one rebounding team, East Carolina. Peter, another three. Ten points for Travis Diener. Must have read the script. Well, when you hot your hot, <laughs> you got to shoot your shot. He's usually pretty hot. He's been smoking the last six games, George. He's almost 50% from three-point range. Marcus Jackson read the lob, but couldn't get it away from Corey Rouse. Good play for East Carolina. Back to within five. Aaron Bradley. Travis Diener, Marcus Jackson, Chris Grimm, and Joe Chapman on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Diener working against Rivers. Took a shot in the face, no call. Worked out okay. Karen Bradley with the triple. Bradley is capable of making the three ball under pressure as well and is a very solid defensive player. Very muscular up top and can guard bigger guards. Comes Wiley slash to the basket, high off the glass. Rebound. Here's Rivers trying another three. Well off the mark again. But another chance for East Carolina to him. East Carolina starting to bang the offensive boards, and again, defense is not complete until the ball is secure. Well, Marquette is hot. From outside tonight, they've hit three of four three-pointers. Travis Diener has a couple, and Marquette has an eight-point lead. Welcome back to the Bradley Center. Marquette out to an eight-point lead on the strength of Travis Diener, the conference's leading scorer. And George, it's like he read the script from the open. He's just lighting well, it up. Well, here you see Gina dropping the first of his two threes, then the second one. And Dina can really mix it up. He'll get twos. He can go to the basket. So he has a real complete offensive game. And he is very, very clever with the basketball and recognizes how to get his defensive man in a difficult situation. Travis has hit four of five field goals. The rest of the team, four for 15. So getting shots tonight certainly has not been a problem for Marquette against the best rebounding team in the conference as freshman Mike Cook pulls up and hits in the lane back into the lineup. That has also been a problem of late dribble penetration. Teams getting to the basket against MU and 
dribble penetration causes a lot of problems for the defense. East Carolina trying to keep the ball out of Dina's hands, but he's a little too clever for that. He's used to it, Chris. Bail out time on the shot clock. Bradley up. Offensive rebound, nearly taken out of there by Marquette, but now East Carolina has it. And the freshman Cook runs into Diener and draws the foul. So Cook, Mike Cook, the freshman out of Philadelphia, top 30 recruit for East Carolina, now will go to the free throw line. Again, Marquette pushing it to eight or nine and unable to sustain. And East Carolina crawling right back into this thing. First free throw is good. So East Carolina only back by five now with the possibility of cutting it to four. Cook was recruited as a two guard, but they discovered that they're better off with him at the point. They inserted him into the starting lineup and uh, he's really responded well. He's averaging almost 14 points a game the last six. He's emerged as their number two scoring threat behind Wiley and that has coincided then with a little success for them. As Peter, speaking of success, well, not that time. Cook leaves for Badiano. That was easy. Again, Marquette hustling hard, getting out to a nice, comfortable lead, and then letting East Carolina get right back in it. Five straight points, George, for East Carolina. Had been an eight-point advantage. Steve Novak back in for Marquette. Dumped down into the post. Merritt looking for room and creates it. Notice what Merritt did. Good head and shoulders fake. Came out the other side for the easy lay-in. It's just a game of cat mouse, George. <laughs> George you just break it down into its simplest form. It's well, a gift. Basketball is a very simple game uh, if played correctly. Oftentimes, when teams get in trouble, they try to get too cute. Marquette making some changes. Brandon Bell back is now into the game. Freshman point guard out of Flint, Michigan along with Damian Mason returning. We are at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Conference USA Basketball tonight. East Carolina Marquette, Chris Roth, along with George Thompson. Travis Dieter, as we talked about in the open, leading the way tonight thus far with Marquette. He has four, six field goals shooting. The rest of the team hasn't been nearly as productive, but Marquette enjoying a five-point lead as we speak. Tom Crean has been giving Diener a blow early here in the second half of the season, trying to save him for the hard push of the second half. Novak open in the corner, in and out, offensive rebound to freshman Mason. Mason got a hand on it a third time, but it goes out of bounds to East Carolina. Again, Marquette cleaning up all the loose chains, but coming away dry. Steve Novak struggling as well. Steve Novak, known for his three-point shooting, has to put together a comprehensive offensive game, does not go to the hoop, and does not shoot the uh, medium range jump shot a lot. So teams have scouted that, and they're taking away that three point. Nine offensive rebounds right now for Marquette. Brandon Bell, tough defense there on the freshman. Mike Cook forces a turnover, and this goes back the other way. Five turnovers now on the Pirates. Brandon Bell starting to come on and see more playing time. Uh, has had some valuable minutes in, in several of the last games. As it does for a lot of players, George, it seems to take a while to acclimate to Tom Crean's system. Well, you know, experience is something that you get just after you need it. <laughs> and, uh, Tom Crean does that have should be on a poster somewhere. I'm thinking nice and strange. Probably in every coach's office in America. It's not like Alka Salsa. There's no instant experience. <laughs> Brandon, the little brother of Charlie Bell, the former point guard at Michigan State, the final four teams, national championship teams. Of course, Tom Crean affiliated with that. So Brandon Bell, no strange for Tom Crean. Tom Crean has known Brandon a very, very long time. Likes him a lot. Merritt working, forced out of the post. Baby Hook doesn't go, and the rebound taken out of there by Corey Rouse. 
Bell tries to draw a call out front instead. Cook drops home the little mid-range jumper, and now it's a three-point advantage for Marquette. East Carolina won't go away, just lurking one or two possessions back after Marquette pushed it to nine. Jeffette McNeil just pounding Brandon Bell. Steve Novak finally helps out. Now Damian Mason out top. This is the scouting report on Marquette. Merritt turning, spinning, traveling in this case. And the third turnover for Marquette. That big lead has shrunk down to three points. East Carolina showing why they're on a three-game winning streak. They trail it by three here in Milwaukee. Marquette with a three-point lead on East Carolina. It was eight, but that man right there, the freshman, Mike Cook, has helped bring the Pirates back, Jordan. Mike Cook came into the basketball game smoking with the turnaround jumper. Gets it to the lane with that dribble penetration we talked about. Goes hard to the hole. Has a variety of moves. Notice how he pulled up, avoiding the charge, and got off the eight, 10-footer with some high accuracy. Seven points for the freshman, averages 10, number two in the conference in terms of freshman scoring. And showing some poise here. Now he and Jafet McNeil in the backcourt. Errol Bing has been quiet. That one bounces over the backboard. The conference player of the week a week ago, Errol Bing, tremendous rebounder. Marquette, Marquette with some three-quarter court pressure that time, falling back into the zone. East Carolina did not adjust. Travis Dieter back into the lineup now for Marquette, trying to restore order. Damian Mason inside. That's rejected by Corey Rouse, emphatically packing his lunch. Luke McKay hits the triple. We're all tied at 21. Marquette expending a lot of energy, pushing that lead to nine, only to see it dissipate. East Carolina will not go away. George Marquette has twice as many field goal attempts as East Carolina in this game's tie. Maybe the best move Marcus Jackson has made this season. Well, Jackson has been known for his inside play in the JUCO ranks, and we have not seen a great deal of it. He has had problems picking up the defensive schemes in particular. Luke McKay, Mike Cook. Working against fellow freshman Damian Mason. Mason fouls him. Cook's going to go to the line. Cook having his way right now, combining the good outside shooting with the tough dribble penetration. Cook taking it to the hoop. And anytime you get to the hoop off of that dribble penetration, you create problems for the whole team. He gets around Mason. Mason is fouled. Cook had a little hook there as well, which wasn't picked up by the referee. But uh, Ty goes to the offensive player. <laughs> I'm impressed he can throw an elbow and dribble with his left hand at the same time. That was uh, impressive. Two points for Cook on that trip. He now has nine. And this game once again tied at 23. Again, Marquette coming in 6-8 in conference play. East Carolina 4-10 thanks to that three-game winning streak. Todd Townsend in, number one. He's got the basketball, his first appearance. Merritt trying to go against the shot blocker. Over the shot blocker this time for Scott Merritt. Merritt operating a little further away from the basket where he has a little more room to maneuver. Has great skills with the basketball. Here's McKay running off a screen. Drops down the long two. His feet were on the line. Five points now for Luke McKay. Dina getting caught behind that screen. Uh, when the defense goes south, it's usually the whole team, Chris. And, and we've seen that here in recent weeks. Marquette wins basketball games when they hold the opponent in the 60s. They are in conference games alone. Marquette is dead last in points allowed and three-point field goal percentage allowed. And for the first 10, 12 games of the season, they were holding teams to a shooting percentage in the 30s. Should say total field goal percentage allowed there. Right. Dead and, last. Uh, They're 11th in three-point field goal percentage allowed. 
Scott Merritt getting very active, getting himself to the line for two. He must continue to fight for position. Good low post position, good medium range position. Derek Wiley back into the game. Team captain, leads the team, points per game, third on the team in rebound, and averaging 20 points plus in this three-game winning streak. But had two buckets early on here, kind of quiet since that time. Merritt goes one for two, giving Marquette a one-point lead. Marquette has had the case of one for twosies here in the last couple of weeks, Chris. Uh, they have not been able to convert the two free throws. Body on. Party on. Bayon's <laughs> party and on, I like it. And that has been another problem. Marquette not sealing off, and the opposition has been able to get stick back opportunities and cash in. MU must do a better job of sealing off. Defense is not completed again, I say, until the ball is captured. That's on the rim, that won't count. Touched by Errol Bing, so wave it off. East Carolina, though, has their first lead. That was a close call. In the game. Merritt Sorry, right up there with Bing, so Marquette being the beneficiary of that one. East Carolina's first lead since they led it 8-7. This is becoming a high-scoring first half score, and as you just mentioned, that does not favor Marquette. Jackson offensive rebound fouled on the putback, so Marcus Jackson active tonight. And we'll go to the free throw line. Jackson having a very positive effect on the game tonight as he has come into the game. Crashing the boards, coming up with that extended rebound, going back hard to the hole, getting himself to the line for two. George, here we are in game 26, and for a big fella, that was just his 18th free throw attempt of the season. Well, he has not had that much playing time. Started out with some injuries and Never did get on track. There we go with that one, one foot twosies again. There you go. Splits him, ties the game at 27. Jafet McNeil, Luke McKay, Errol Bing, Musa Badian. Derek Wiley camping out down there just outside of your picture in the lower left. There he is, running the baseline. Loses control of it on the way up, but Musa Badian. Johnny on the spot picks it up for East Carolina. Townsend losing the handle on it. Marquette falling back into the zone. East Carolina did not adjust. They back it out and uh, will go into their uh, zone offense now. 15 on the shot clock as it pops into your screen. Wiley working on Townsend. Mark, but another reload for East Carolina. The well, odds are this shot will go in somehow. When you give a team that many cracks at it, bad things happen. Bing works on Merritt, maybe blocked by Scott. He reclaims it. Well, Marquette escapes after giving East Carolina three shots at it. Damian Mason from the wing. Rebound body on. Lead for Wiley, and he'll go to the free throw line. East Carolina getting back with the hard push after the miss. Going straight to the hoop. Townsend only one back to defend. So once the shot is missed, Marquette must put their heads down, beat cheeks, and get back down the floor defensively. Wiley a 69% free throw shooter. Now has his sixth point of the game. Giving East Carolina one point lead. Steve Novak back in, Chris Grimm back in, Joe Chapman in, Jackson. Damian Mason and M.U. Townsend to the bench, excuse me, George. No, uh, sorry, Chris, uh, M.U. needing a much bigger performance defensively. Travis Deaner can't get it to go, 
Jordan Badian has a rebound, and then Joe Chapman ties it up, but the possession error favors East Carolina, so when we come back to the Bradley Center, the Pirates will have a chance to extend on their one-point lead. Conference USA action continues right after this. East Carolina leading Marquette 28-27. Chris Roth, George Thompson with you here at the Bradley Center. We're Marquette on pace to set another attendance record. They were terrific at home over the last two seasons, but some chinks in the armor this year at home. They've lost a couple of home games. You take a look at the field goal percentage, and Marquette's still getting 12 more shots than East Carolina, and yet they trail by one. Mike Cook dumps it to Bing. Bing creates some room. Gets it back. McNeil can't get the three. Bodies flying everywhere as Travis Deaver navigates through traffic. Grim, not used to being holding the basketball that long, George. Well, notice how they're playing Steve Novak. So man to man, up close and personal defense, trying to keep the ball out of his hands for those three ball opportunities. You see the shot clock down at seven. It's all Travis Deaner from here. What a twist to Merrick. Lost it on the way up. Now the question is whether the jump ball was called before the shot clock expired. Either way, Marquette having a shot underneath the hoop did not convert. Actually, it was a pretty good shot for the time that was left on the clock. Super dish from Diener. Appear, they appear to be getting a fresh 35 and will keep underneath their own hoop. Well, there's the jump ball between Chris Grimm and Musa Badian. The officials trying to determine if that occurred before the shot clock expired. And it's from when the buzzer went off, you would think that it did occur before the expiration of the shot clock. Therefore, with possession arrow favoring Marquette, it would be Marquette's basketball with a fresh 35. Underneath their own hoop, which is where they've been all night, but unable to convert. Just haven't been in the hoop enough. So again, another conference. We had one earlier amongst the officials, and here we go again. Larry Rose, David Marisic, and Alan Walton, the officials tonight for Conference USA. Coach Harris not wanting to hear it because they're already lined up with uh, Marquette having a ball with a fresh 35. So whatever the referees are saying are falling on deaf ears as far as East Carolina is concerned. Now they won't reload the shot clock. Possession <laughs> goes to Marquette. So now he likes what he heard. They got one second. One second is plenty of time to get a good shot off. Touch and shoot. There it is. Teardrop Travis Diener. Plenty of time. Not to worry. That may ignite this crowd a little bit. This game has been fits and spurts. And Marquette goes back on top. 29-28. Inside of two minutes. Cook off the window. Puts East Carolina back on top 11 points now for the freshman mu with no defensive answer for mr cook jeffett mcneil fouls travis diener neither team in the super bonus yet spike diener will step to the line for a one and one situation one of the best free throw shooters in the league uh, averaging uh, about 88% from there. There you go, George. One of his rare misses. Very rare misses. He only missed 16 free throws in 122 attempts this season. East Carolina with a one-point lead and the basketball. The freshman Cook, he's been the story. In this first half, can't convert there, and the rebound tap to Travis Deaver. Hey, 
MU's gonna have to gut this game out. This is a very tough team for Marquette. A lot of athleticism, a lot of guys about the same size who can run and jump and get up and down the floor. And a good rebounding team, although Marquette has done a terrific job on the glass tonight. They just haven't converted their shots. Just 36%. Here we go, another shot clock. Wind down, Chapman. Chris the offensive rebound. Chapman blocked by body on, but a foul. I believe they're going to get Errol Bing. Well, Bing bails Chapman out because, again, as the shot clock winds down, Marquette gets under 10. They do not generally come up with a good high percentage shot. Travis Dina just bailed them out a minute ago with one second left. And Chapman got bailed out by fouling, taking a very difficult shot with the uh, shot clock winding down to zero. Chapman at 71% hits the first one. We'll see if he can stop the 50% streak that Marquette has been riding from the foul line. Or as George calls it, the one for twosies. Two for twosies, George. Excellent. And a Marquette one-point lead with 33.3 to go. Todd Townsend checks in for defense, replacing Steve Novak. Marquette would like to put up a defensive stand here going into the locker room with at least the one-point lead, especially after pushing the lead to nine in the middle of the uh, first half. Ken backs down into the zone. East Carolina and Mike Cook waiting to get started. Here we go. Ten seconds. Arrow Bank slicing in. Too easy for East Carolina. Marquette calls a timeout with four and a half seconds to go. Bing just served it to him now. Bing has had a tremendous impact on this basketball game. And Marquette playing some good defense for about 22 seconds, but that entry pass down low has been their Achilles heel. For the first 18 seconds, East Carolina was just waiting. Just waiting. And the a hard cut, nobody covered it. They get a layup out of it. And you have to take that shot. Uh, when you get an easy shot like that, you must take it no matter how much time is left. Marquette has four and a half seconds left uh, to get a shot off. East Carolina may push up, making it difficult for Marquette to get across the timeline and trying to use up that four and a half seconds. Well, it only took them one second to get a good shot off, but that was underneath their own basket. Here they got to work the length of the floor. Diener, Grimm, Merritt, of course, Steve Novak now back in. And Joe Chapman for Tom Green. Let's see what they come up with. Diener allowing the Grimm screen. Cannot convert. So at halftime, it's East Carolina led by the freshman Mike Cook, who has 11 points, taking a one-point advantage into the locker room as they try and win their fourth straight game. Travis Diener has 12 points for Marquette. A couple of three balls, but he's been the most consistent offense. East Carolina coming from eight down. They lead it by one at the break. Halftime will continue when we return to the Bradley Center. You're watching Conference USA Basketball. Ready for the second half. East Carolina trying to improve that winning streak to four games. They have a one-point lead over the homestanding Marquette Golden Eagles. We look at the halftime statistics. Field goal percentage. Marquette getting numerous shots more than the Pirates. Right now they shot 10 more field goals, but ECU shooting it better. And rebounds about even, although Marquette had an early advantage, big advantage there. Leading scores, we talked about them just a moment ago. Travis Diener has 12. And Mike Cook, the freshman, has 11 to lead the way for East Carolina. Cook showing a variety of moves, playing beyond his freshman experience. Seems cool, calm, and collected out there, under control, and really has a variety of moves that have shown us a lot of ways he can put points on the board. Well, we mentioned early in the broadcast that these two teams have split four games last year. East Carolina upset Marquette. At East Carolina, Marquette exacting some revenge with a 32-point thumping here at the Bradley Center. 
This doesn't appear to be in the blowout category. Over the last eight minutes of the first half, George, we had five ties and six lead changes. Well, Tom Green said at the top, this was not going to be an easy basketball game. Basketball is a game of matchups, uh, whether you're talking high school, college, pros, and Marquette does not match up very well against this type of team. East Carolina turns it over to start the second half. That is eight in the game, and so Marquette now will get a crack at reclaiming the lead. Damian Mason, Terry Sanders, who has the basketball, Travis Peter, Scott Merritt, and Steve Novak, starting five on the floor for Marquette, and the starting five on the floor for East Carolina. Frank Robinson trying to guard Meter. Leaps for Sanders. Missed the easy conversion there, and East Carolina comes out of there with it. Novak 0 for 4 from the floor. <laughs> oh, Mike Cook now 5 for 6 from the floor, George, a freshman with 13 points. Cook having his way, feeling very good about himself. Thank you very much. Robinson, Mike Cook, Musa Badiamovic, shot blocker in there. Loose ball on the floor. Floor burns and a timeout for Travis Diener, who is frustrated at the way things are going for his Golden Eagle. Well, one of the reasons he's frustrated is East Carolina has come out and pretty much started back where they left off. They're doing a nice job of getting good high percentage shots. Errant pass there, and, and Marquette lucky to come up with the basketball. Travis Dino going down to the wood. Yeah, it's a full timeout, so they talk it over, we'll talk it over. East Carolina with a three-point lead here at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. We'll be back right after this. Chris Roth, George Thompson back with you here at the Bradley Center. East Carolina with a three-point lead. Marquette will inbound. One of the stats that screams at you, Chris, Marquette crushing East Carolina on the offensive boards, 11 to five, and with a positive assist to turnover ratio, and Niza has translated into points. Steve Novak hits a three. Novak finally getting off the Snyder. Again, Travis Dean and the trigger man. They need that guy to get going. That's his first field goal of the night. Wiley creative with the left hand, but can't get it to fall. And Marquette coming back, tied at 34. He's for Novak, now Mason. He'll take a three. It's contagious. Marquette needing some confidence right now. Now they've got to put together a string of defensive stops and try to wrestle momentum of this basketball game away from EC. Damian Mason doesn't shoot many, but he's eight for 14 this season on three pointers and Marquette back on top. Well, he's been very judicious with the tray, but uh, when he has shot it, he's done a good job of it. East Carolina, Robinson inbound. Into the hands of Cook. I haven't even talked much about Wiley because Cook has been so good. And he is again. He did it to him again. Quickly back, Mason trying to get an advantage. Now peels off. See, Cook has a full head of steam now, and uh, he'll carry that pretty much to the rest of the game. Poor shot selection that time by Mason. Mason trying to get Cook to play defense. Scott Merritt with a bail on block. Transition defense has not been a strength for Marquette this year, but Scott Merritt able to erase that advantage. Nice play by Scotty. Marquette needing more of that, but again, they have to stop that dribble penetration. Marquette playing his own. Wiley whips it into body on. Find some room against Sanders, but left it short. Sanders clears the rebound. Nice job. Sanders holding his ground, not going for the foul. Frank Robinson on the hack with Diener. His second foul. And Marquette gets a fresh 35. Robinson had to foul. Diener had turned the corner on him, had that critical edge. 
Travis thought about loading it up. He said Sanders hard to the basket. Bing clears it away. And again, Marquette missing some no footers. Look at Mike Cook work. Cook kind of schooling Travis Diener. As Diener usually does to other opponents. Uh, Cook needs to another, see another face defensively. Fra Frank Robinson picks up his third foul. Take a look. Mike Cook changed direction. Freshman from Philadelphia, top 30 recruit. This guy will be a force in the conference. Well, if he's playing like this as a freshman, uh, he may not last. That ball tipped away from Travis Dieter, now 23 on the shot clock. Merritt goes to the post. Carving out some room is Scott Merritt. Marquette seesaw is back on top. Merritt pulling the Humphrey Bogart that time would not be denied. We have to see more of that. They've got to feed the post. Offense works best from inside out. East Carolina inside. Moose Sabadeon, the native of France. Well, talking about carving out some room. Well, that was, that was an <laughs> offensive foul. Missed call by the referees, plain and simple. Pirates back in front by a point. It's the way it's been. Oh, no back. Long range. Diener takes it back home. No fear. Diener among the land of the Giants. We'll take it to the hoop. Diener has a principle down that a lot of players don't understand, Christopher, is that he can throw it higher than they can jump. <laughs> Diener now with 14 points. Leads the conference at just over 18 a game. Wiley. Oh. Rebound Merritt. Diener quickly back. Leap for Mason. Diener dribbling with the hard push. Head up, finding Mason. All by his lonesome underneath the hoop. That's gotten the crowd back in it. The crowd is aroused. Fan appreciation night, and they certainly appreciate Travis Peter. Delton Rivers. We talked about his sharp shooting off the bench at 45% his last six games. That's his first bucket of the night, and we're tied again at 43. That quieted that crowd a little bit. Let's see if Novak can light him up. Novak, Novak. starting to heat up. He's got two threes here in the second half after getting a collar in the first half. And this is Novak's major contribution to this team. To make a contribution and be effective, he has to be on from the perimeter. Number one, all time at Marquette in three point shooting percent. And this is another one close range. That's what Errol Bing does best. Marquette must put bodies on each individual player, no matter what defensive configuration they're in, and box out and get to the basketball. If they don't get it, if one player doesn't get it, they have to box their man out to help another team gain uh, another player on their side gain possession. Shot clock winding way down. Sanders on the miss. I think they called Damian Mason on the foul, even though the crowd certainly saw it differently. So Marquette clinging to a one-point lead here over East Carolina at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Marquette with a one-point lead. They've changed the foul call. They initially signaled the last foul before the break was against Marquette. We told you the crowd didn't like it, but they saw it correctly. Officials got it worked out. It's actually against East Carolina. Dina going to the hoop. No fear. That was nice. Spotting Mason underneath. Kicking to uh, Novak. But a triple. Dina in the middle of all that stuff. As he 
usually is. 14 points, five assists right now. A lot of confusion. Sorry, Chris, as we went to the break, uh, and we talked about it earlier, Marquette, when holding the opposition in the 60s, win basketball games. When they don't, they lose. That's a remarkable discrepancy. 20 point difference between wins and losses. That tells the whole story, though. Well, that whole difficulty as we went to break as far as who who was going to get possession of the basketball was made possible by another fist no footer. Bradley with the three. How about Karen Bradley tonight? Two or three three pointers. Karen Bradley with six. As I said, he can drill the three and he does play some pretty good defense. Tom Green showing uh, Mr. Cook another defensive face. Having a tough night tonight. Terry Sanders, as he usually does, digs it out of there. Cameron Bradley hit some big threes for this team last year in the tournament. Yes, he did. And uh, was a real threat off the bench. But Tom Crane has seen enough. And, uh, can't get enough of that, though, if you're Tom Crane. Got to have it. Meanwhile, Cameron Bradley trying to put the clamps on Cook. He has, he's very muscular up top. He's short of stature, but uh, he plays a little bigger than he really is. Those are two pretty stout kids right there. Mike Cook pretty well put together for a pressure. Somebody's got to shut him down if you're Marquette. He's got 17 points. Chris Grimm. Oh, the push by body on off the loose ball. Again, Marquette had an opportunity to shut him down. Did not come up with the uh, first uh, shot. Bradley and Grimm checked in together. Grimm actually deflected that first shot away down low, but body unable to pick up the loose ball and flush it home. Five point lead for Marquette. Belton Rivers not giving Steve Novak much room. Right there, he could step in and shoot it. Well, again, as I said to you earlier, he has not developed that mid range game. Bailout time for Travis Cedar. Novak. But he has that three-pointer down pat, I'm thinking. That's what happens. Travis scrambles the court. They forgot to watch him. Well, see what that dribble penetration does? It causes all kinds of problems for the defense. Diener and Novak with a real strong connection offensively. Rivers. An easy flush for Badian off the dribble penetration. Quiets the crowd a little bit. They were getting a little ramped up because Marquette is at six of seven threes here in the second half, George. Make it seven of eight? No. But Grimm fighting for another chance, and he'll earn it off the jump ball because the possession arrow favors Marquette. They lead it by six. Travis Diener from three. How about Steve Novak from Travis Diener for three? We're at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, East Carolina, and Marquette. Chris Roth, George Thompson with you. Marquette with a bit of a surge here as they've jumped out to a six-point lead. The offense starting to work a little better, George. Offense going well now. And here you see Dina with that double outside pick. That's a standard play for Marquette. Marquette will use that many times in a basketball game. And on the pick and roll, Marquette will fade to the three as opposed to going to the basket, particularly when you see Steve Novak set the pick. He will not roll to the hoop. He will fade to his favorite spot on the floor, which is beyond the three-point arc. Peter goes down hard off the inbounds. That ball knocked out of bounds by Jafet McNeil, who is into the game. Derek Wiley has missed his last eight shots for East Carolina, number 31, their leading score. Belton Rivers is in along with Bing, and the shot blocker body on. Travis Diener, and they get called for it, lower the shoulder on McNeil. Well, that was a good call. They call that one, but they missed the other one on the other end. I believe the other one was, was it by body on? It was uh, body on putting his body in to Scott Merritt. Marcus yes. Jackson in for Marquette. Karen Bradley, Diener, Grimm, and Novak. At the three-quarter pole here, 10 minutes left. 
No contest there. Bing and Travis Steiner down low in an offensive rebound for the Pirates. TCU. Bing's been a four-year starter for East Carolina, and he is a top-five rebounder in the conference every year. ECU has to really be kept off of the boards because that is very disheartening to play defense that long and for them to get a fresh oh 35. Speaking of that long, Rivers way outside. And another fresh 35. Yeah. Long rebound tapped out and a reload for East Carolina. Badian did a smart thing that time. Knew he couldn't capture it, but deflected it to a teammate. Well, that's an easy way to break out of an 0 streak for Derek Wiley. Marquette uses the exact same play. He missed eight in a row. He's now three for 11. Usually for Damon Mason, they use that exact same play. They've also used it for Paul Christian. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Go back, looking for Diener, but Jafet McNeil not letting him get loose. And a foul on body on as they try to dump it down low to Marcus Jackson. Damian Mason coming back, Scott Merritt coming back. Let's take a look back at that play, George. Well, nice lead pass over the top, and Wilson getting off to Snyder that way. Pretty high percentage shot. Yeah. Both teams shooting good percentages here in the second half. Mason on the baseline against River. Bring it out top and reload with Diener. Plenty of time on the shot clock here. A little over aggressive on the pick by Chris Grimm. He'll get called for it. it. Goes back the other way. These are the hidden point erasers, Chris, that Marquette has suffered through in the last couple of months. They have a possession. They're plus four with the basketball, and they don't even get a shot at the basket. Turnover. East Carolina basketball. So now East Carolina with a shot to move a little closer. Bing, double team. Good Chapman now into the game. Wiley left open from the wing, and the flush gave him a little confidence. He hits a triple. He's got 11, and it's a one-point game for Marquette. Well, after that surge, Marquette has just two points in the last four minutes. Well, oh, fasten your seatbelt. Buckle up. But this is going to be a roller coaster. Oh, big time spin by Scott Merritt. Smooth move Merritt. Using one of those nice fluid moves that uh, we've been come accustomed to seeing. Again, he has to have more touches down low. To figure out how to uh, make that scoreboard blink. Harold Bing, a rare three-pointer, but hits it. And now we're tied at 57. Just what you'd expect from Bill Heron's team. Eight of their 14 conference games this year, George, have been decided by six points or less. So this is nothing new for them. And when you have a team like this on the road, playing this close and giving Marquette all they can handle, their confidence grows as the game wears on. Bing tries to get a flop. Merritt tried to give it up. He turns it over instead, and here comes Mike Cook, who's back into the game. He's got three fouls. Keep that in mind. Make it four. Classic case that time of Merritt being too unselfish that time. Should have shot the basketball. Didn't. Consequently, a turnover. And now Mike Cook has four fouls. Well, moments ago, Marquette had quite a bit to cheer about. They had an eight-point lead, but now we're back tied at 55 on a 10-2 run. But Mike Cook could be a problem here for the Pirates. They're going to miss this. Com compliments of Mike Cook showing a variety of offensive moves, strong to the hoop, changing direction. Mike Cook sitting on the bench now, getting a piece of pine with four fouls. Ordinarily, that would be an item but this East Carolina team has so many players that can come in with very little drop off. Diener working on Rivers, draws the foul, and 
Travis Diener will go to the free throw line. They have seven players within a point or point and a half of scoring in double figures each game. So they've got a lot of offensive weapons and uh, most probably someone will pick up the slack. Well, just when you get Cook out of the game, Wiley starting to heat up off that alley-oop flush on the set play and then hit a triple. Well, that got him going and uh, coaches will design a play like that to get their leading scorer off the snide. And the conference's leading scorer has got his number, 19 points now for Travis Diener. Averages just under 19 a game. And Marquette back up in front by two. Biggest lead tonight has been eight points in both times Marquette has owned. Lead. Once in the first half, once here in the second half. Luke McKay, number 13, back into the game for East Carolina. Well, it's one thing to push that lead up. Another three ball again. East Carolina with a lot of offensive weapons. Finish the thought. It's another thing to push that lead up. Uh, it's one thing, and it's another thing to protect it. Aaron to the hoop. They're behind right now. Ripped out of there by Wiley. Got him on the way up. Chapman deflects it on the other side. Marquette steals it back. Mason. Merritt got the offensive rebound in heavy traffic. Musabadian, I think, got a piece of Mason's, and then he definitely got a piece of Scott Merritt. Great hustle play, no question about it. Merritt in the middle of a whole lot of traffic coming down with that basketball. Good hustle play. Gets himself to the line for a one-and-one -one situation. ECU with uh, 18 fouls. Marquette with only three. They have three to waste before they get into the bonus situation. Merritt at 71%. Now has double digits in points tonight. He has 10. He's got six rebounds. McKay out. Jafet McNeil back in. Shaping up to be a photo finish. As Merritt puts Marquette back up by one. Back and forth they go. Crowd trying to urge on a little defense here for the homestanding Golden Eagles. They'll close out the regular season. Body on inside, fouled by Merritt. Marquette will close out the regular season. They will take on Louisville here on Saturday. Louisville. Ranked 25th right now. They were beating up St. Louis earlier tonight. As we take another look at the foul. Over the top, Badian goes up. Both Diener and Merritt reach in to prevent Badian from getting that uh, shot up to the hoop. It still got pretty close, Chris. He had a good chance at a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Badian shooting 65% from there. One out of two, but look at that, it's way too easy for Errol Bing. Huh? Off a missed free throw. It's a two-point advantage. Those are the types of plays when you look back at a game, when they mount up, they add up to defeat. Merritt, blocked by Badian. He got a piece of it. Merritt's got to go back into his bag of tricks. He's got to show him the basketball. A little head and shoulder. And a turnover by East Carolina. We'll give it back to Marquette. They trail by two. A shot blocker of Badian's caliber will get his timing down on a good offensive player like Scott Merritt. And until Merritt starts to change up and show him some different things, uh, Badian will have a lot of success. The native of France had eight blocks in the game earlier this year, tying his own school record. That was against Memphis. Brandon Bell into the game. Keith Merritt, big jump stop. Badian got it again, but this time Merritt perseveres. We're tied at 63. Get used to it. Timeout called by East Carolina. We'll keep it here. Marquette's gonna have to give uh, 
ECU a little dose of roughhouse basketball <laughs> because ECU is feeling very good about themselves with 437 left and the score is all tied up. Well, we talked about the sheriff in the middle. See, Badian restores, keeps that law and order underneath. Scotty did give him a little head and shoulders fake, uh, but he stayed after it. He was quicker to reload there. Badian unofficially with four blocks in the game. I think he may have more than that. But again, he's had eight in a game this year. He's third in the conference, seventh in the country in block shots. And as you see, career block shots, he's third all time in Conference USA. But those high flyers, those shot blockers, very simply, is you want to show them the basketball. Because they want to get up there and swat that thing. Well, East Carolina's saying he's playing much smarter now. They've been able to, I mean, he's played a lot of minutes tonight, and he's often had foul trouble. They just can't afford to keep him on the floor, but he's been playing much smarter of late. And tonight, they haven't had to take him off the floor because of foul. Because what he is doing is really taking advantage of the opportunities and going full out when he knows he has the advantage in the situation and is not going for some of the fakes. So again, we get back to that cat and mouse thing where adjust, readjust, adjust. So uh, it's incumbent upon Marquette now to adjust to Badian and get some high percentage shots down low. A ball tipped by Arrow Bing. It'll stay with Marquette. 21 on the shot clock. Tom Green calls out the play. They have an enormous play. Tom Green. Both that offensively, is both offensively and defensively. And if you get hurt or you come in late for whatever reason, you're way behind. Dina with four on the shot clock. His fourth three-pointer of the game. Diener now has 22 points tonight, which is what he's averaged over the last six games. But again, I present to you, Christopher, that's a difficult shot to make on a consistent basis with the shot clock winding down. And Diener has been as good at it as anyone in the league. Oh, body on is just having a game tonight. That was a strong move, taking it right at Merritt. He's got 14 points. Well, Merritt put up a good defensive stand there, but uh, Badian with just a better offensive move on that particular play. Merritt trying to answer back. Up and under. Grimm had his hands on it, kept it alive. Now Merritt. Get the fresh shot clock. And they'll put it in the hands of Diener. Good hustle play by Chris Kim. Giving uh, Marquette a fresh 35. Mason to the basket. And there's a foul finally drawn on body on. He pinned that ball in the glass, but got him with the body. So that's his third foul, and Mason will go to the free throw line. Well, as an offensive player, and you have the ability to go hard to the hoop. You have to stick that ball right on the nose of a good shot blocker. You have to put it right in his face and challenge him at certain times in the basketball game. And Mason did that and, and came away successfully. Mason hits the first. It's a two point lead now for Marquette. Eight on the night for the freshman. Chris Grimm gets a nice hand from the uh, crowd and his teammates. Uh, some quality minutes played by Chris, some good hustle out there. It really started for him in the last home game here against Tulane with some big activity minutes. Travis Steiner raised up and given Marquette a little life with four seconds left on the shot clock and now they lead it by three. Two minutes, 34 seconds left here. East Carolina trailing by three. You take a look at the game resets. Each team with a full timeout. Each team with two 30 timeouts. Marquette 
almost into the double bonus now. One more foul for East Carolina, Mar Mar Carolina and Marquette will be shooting two free throws, and Marquette has a few yet to give. ECU with uh, 65 points, so Marquette with a chance. With 228, this game will be won by the team that plays toughest in the trenches. Oh, and a foul on Travis Diener. Body on, got to the offensive rebound. We told you about East Carolina and their penchant for close games in Conference USA. The game's decided by five points or less. We'll take a look at the records. East Carolina, two and three. Marquette, four and two this season. But, it, but East Carolina is shooting 48%, Marquette 34. The first half of the season, it was the other way around. Nice block by uh, Scott Merritt. To finish the thought, the team that plays the toughest in the trenches with 220 left will win this basketball game because at this stage of the game, it's what's up front that counts. It's the board play. It's the big guys underneath. And free throw shooting. And Marquette, a better free throw shooting team. Loose ball taken out of there by Damian Mason. Mike Cook playing with four fouls. Lost that one on the way up. And Marquette with a three-point lead as we come up on the two-minute warning. Here's where Marquette has to take their time, but they've got to be quick about it and not get too far into the shot clock where they have to throw up something desperate. Travis Diener can't always hit him from the corner with a hand in his face with three seconds on the clock. You got it, Chris. But he may have to. Well, we're down under 10 right now. And not much happening. Here we go. Bail him out, Travis. Rebound, East Carolina. Wiley, one on three. And able to draw a foul in that situation. On Steve Novak. Steve Novak uh, is really needing to work on his defense. Not a good high percentage shot falling away. But uh, Derek Wiley, the team's leading scorer, could have just as easily made that shot. Wiley has 11 points tonight. He'll shoot two, 16 fouls now on Marquette. The next one will send them into the bonus. But again, notice the shot Marquette got up. Excellent. Wiley missing the uh, front end of two. He's a 69% free throw shooter. Look at the lollipops in the background. Maybe that's got something to do with it. One out of two, one of twosies. Well, it's the, those, those circular things, that's that twilight zone thing Reverse. working back yeah. there. Supposed to make your eyes spin. See, here's where Marquette has to get some offensive fluidity. Yeah, to see if that's a word. <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, Wiley right in the grill and Novak wouldn't let him get it off. That was option one. Now it's down to 12 on the shot clock. Mason. There you go. There you go. Kick out Diener. Four on the clock. Merritt. Wow. That is out of bounds to East Carolina inside of a minute. There were two seconds on the shot clock. Well, give East Carolina a lot of credit with a good defensive stand, but Marquette turned down several shots in that offensive sequence. If you're a glasses half full guy, George, at least they're not selfish. Well, sometimes, <laughs> uh, you know, you can be too unselfish, and it has happened at least twice that has led to turnovers. All right, East Carolina with the basketball, trailing by two inside of a minute. You talked about the matchup, George. You just kind of expected this. Watching what these two teams have done of late. Marquette has lost five of their last seven. East Carolina has won three in a row. They're a good rebounding team. They've been a hot shooting team of late. All things that cause Marquette problems. And now with 50 seconds to go, it's a two-point game. Kind of what we expected. If you don't look at the records and you look at some of the other things, this isn't a surprise. Well, East Carolina going into their huddle right now, you would assume that uh, they want something. Coach Heron wants something going to the hoop. Uh, via the dribble penetration or setting up and getting some uh, sweet low post position. But they will take the opportunity, uh, three-pointer or medium range jump shot if it presents itself. But they will go probably with a higher probability shot, which is down low. 
they want either a, a high percentage shot or to get to the free throw line. And we talked about being for conference seating. Right now, Marquette in at the number nine spot. That would mean a date with TCU in the first round, a team that has already beaten Marquette this year. But if they were to lose tonight and Southern Miss wins, Southern Miss now goes into the nine spot. Marquette drops to number 10. And that would change up the matchup in the first round. Could put them against Louisville or St. Louis next week in the first round. So Crucial defensive stand here if Marquette can hold up defensively, ECU will have no choice but to foul if Marquette can limit them to one shot and capture the defensive rebound. All right, Mike Cook, 17 points on the night. He's got the basketball. Cook, Fadion keeps it alive, but Chapman able to grab it. And there you go, George. They've got a foul with 25.8. Good defensive stand there. They had no choice. Oh. Oh my uh -oh. goodness. Heron, Heron got a T-bone. The worst possible thing that could happen at this stage of the game, I'm thinking. I don't know if Heron got it or Mike Cook got it. I think Cook got it. He got called for his fifth foul, which he was done. Oh, Cook wanted the foul on the other end. Either way, this is the worst possible time for a technical foul for ECU. Boy, a guy that didn't show any signs of being a freshman may have just made a freshman like error in judgment well it was the biggest uh, mistake of all Diener will shoot the technicals too and then the double bonus too because that was team foul number 10 and then the ball out of bounds so that was just a disaster for East Carolina the foul was on Cook, the technical on Cook, and a brilliant game won't be remembered because of a momentary loss of reason. Al <laughs> that's, a, that's putting it very gently, Chris. Al McGuire used to say the best thing about a freshman is that he becomes a sophomore, and there's a classic example of that. Cook turning in a brilliant performance only to put his team in a very deep hole by uh, getting a technical. Heron was close to getting one himself, but uh, Cook took the honor. <laughs> and that's the third strike. Then he upstages his coach, so that's three strikes against him. So Mark well, Because what they were looking at is Travis Diener going down, double bonus. With 25.8 seconds to go, even if he makes two, now it's a four-point game, but you've got the ball back, and you've still got time to work some machinations. But now it's a four-point deficit with Diener at the line, 4-2, and Marquette basketball, and that pretty much makes it a wash. Right. They were in a, in a position to elongate the game. Sure. Uh, be it a foul and, and try to trade two for one or three for two. But uh, if Diener makes one of these uh it makes it a three possession game and then marquette will have the ball in which case uh ecu will have to foul again now they're still sorting something out here with the officials now it's tom Crean talking it over now we're gonna have another conference well, communication skills on display big time tonight. Heron over by the bench now after uh, feeling like he was done wrong. He didn't want to play with uh, Tom Green and the referee. The referee had to uh, beckon him over s several times. Marquette, meanwhile, uh, in the super bonus. Your guess is as good as well, mine, Chris. What that's what I don't understand about. because that was team foul number 10, so that should be two shots. I don't know why this is a, a problem, but that's what we're being told there. High, the low five there from Tom Green and the official. Heron's still not happy. I bet the high five it. didn't help him out much <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, that was a little... Uh, 
little competitive touch there by Tom Green. All right, so here comes, his, there's Mike Cook. And again, he, he played tremendous tonight. But he lost his head at the most inopportune time for his team. And now Travis Diener, they'll try and ice him. If he makes this, it's a two possession game. However, remember, Marquette will have possession of the basketball because of the technical foul. Right, and that pretty much sells up the basketball game. Uh, that, that, that sequence of free throws that were just made pretty much sold up the basketball game. But uh, it's some hard cheese here in Wisconsin for <laughs> TCU to swallow the way this game has gone down in the last minute or so. Oh, freeway. East Carolina and Marquette tonight. Chris Roth and George Thompson. Final seconds winding down. Marquette now up five. We've set it up for you pretty well. East Carolina now with just one 30-second timeout remaining. Oh, freeway uh, ingesting a lot of carbohydrates. So. No, he's working them off now. All right, so Diener shooting for point number 26 tonight. Seven assists, shooting 50% from the floor. There it is. So it's not possession after the technical foul. We were told incorrectly. East Carolina needs a couple of threes. Wiley fouled on the way to the rack with 20.6. Well, that's the last thing you want to do in this situation with 20.6 is let uh, the opposition go to the basket and score some points with the clock stop. So, uh, uh, again, that, that was a defensive uh, a mental error on Marquette's part. All right, so Wiley to the free throw line. He's got, well, he still has 12. Points. That didn't help the cause. Well, as it turns out, uh, they'll pick up one point maybe, but they'll still have to foul. They're going to try to stretch this game out as long as oh, yeah. possible, Chris. Oh, yeah. Steve Novak comes back in. They had Chapman in for defense, but now Novak is in because if they foul somebody, you'd like them to foul Steve Novak if you're Marquette. Well, you've got uh, Novak, Nina, and Merritt out there. Excellent free throw shooting. Mason also capable of dropping the free throw. They get it into Diener, and he's fouled right away by McNeil. So Diener will go to the free throw line, sitting on 26 points. His high this year is 31. Marquette doing a good job that time of not getting knocked off their route and getting to the basketball so the entry pass could be made. Marquette, number two in the conference, coming in in free throw percentage at 74%. George in the second half tonight. They are now 11 for 11. Well, we compared the uh, free throw shooting percentages at the top and talked about the fact that it may come down to that, and Marquette had a clear advantage uh, in that area. A perfect dozen in the second half from the strike for Marquette and 28 points for Diener. No fouls here. Oh my goodness, Rivers bombs it and they call their last timeout. Well, that's what he can do. And that makes it a four point game now, 13.8. No timeouts left for East Carolina. Well, they picked up three in about three. So, uh, Marquette not completely out of the woods yet. Just ECU. hand off and screen yeah. for Belton Rivers. McNeil hands it off and then sets screen two guys. ECU coming with the hard push handoff. Three ball, timeout, 13.8 left. Marquette plus four, so MU not out of the woods completely yet. A couple of free throws may seal the deal. But again, A, Marquette has to get the ball in and hope for the foul, and if, uh, which is a pretty much a certainty, and get it into the right people as far as free throw shooting is concerned. East Carolina burned their last time out. Possession arrow does favor the Pirates, however. They get it into Novak, and they elect not to foul him, and, and they nearly steal it. Poor ball handling. 
Very poor ball handling under pressure. That almost was disastrous. Disastrous, and after they ran that inbound, Tom Green wants to talk it over. When the double team came, Novak tried to get rid of it immediately. He had five seconds to try and pick out a free man. And the worst thing you can do is really hurry that pass out of your hand just to get rid of it like it's a hot potato in that scenario. Well, and Marquette has three timeouts left. He could have held the ball for four seconds, burned some clock, called the timeout. Exactly. So there are a lot of options there, but... Uh, that was not option A. <laughs> no, that, that, was, that, that wasn't even option Z. <laughs> But Marquette's uh, getting another chance to get it inbound, and, and what you have is a, a bunch of good free throw shooters out there, all five players capable of knocking them down. Now this time they quickly foul Diener, although they weren't trying to. <laughs> All right, so Travis Diener now coming back down to the other end. And the way this is going, he may have a shot at his season high, George. Well, the referees were on automatic. They were uh, kind of coaching a little bit that time, figuring that... Uh, that was the presumption of guilt. Yes, ECU was going to foul. <laughs> Diener, eight out of nine from the stripe tonight. They get 9 out of 10, 13 for 13 in the second half for Marquette, and 29 points now for Diener. The only other guy in double figures for Marquette, Scott Merritt, has 13 to go along with eight boards. And you can look to the charity strike for uh, this victory, plus some uh, nice, hard defense in the last couple minutes. And a brain cramp by Mike Cook. Rebound to Marquette, that should do it. Yeah. And Rouse with the foul, and now Scott Merritt will walk down to the other end. And 3.4 seconds, this can become a three-possession game and pretty much over. Oh, I'll just go out on a limb and say it'll be over. If he hits a free. Chris, you're just wild and reckless, I, I, aren't you? I, uh, quite the gambler, aren't I? Very keen observation of the obvious. Scott Merritt trying to keep Marquette perfect from the line here in the second half and it finally ends. Well, the damage is done now with uh, 3.4 seconds left. Uh, there are no six or seven point plays in the uh, book, as far as I know. First round tournament games start on Wednesday in Cincinnati. The Kelly Tires Conference USA Tournament. Both these teams, if well, East Carolina not in yet. Well, that pads the stats for Jafet McNeil with point two. Marquette wins at 77-73, a dogfight tonight with the Pirates who are trying to win their fourth in a row. But Marquette goes to seven and eight. One last firework tonight. From just about three quarters, Marquette gutting out a very, very crucial victory this evening. So Marquette goes to seven and eight, George, in conference, 16 and 10 overall. East Carolina drops to four and 11. They are still not in to next week's tournament. They need a win and a Houston loss. Travis Diener with the big night, he had 30. Scott Merritt had 14. Mike Cook leading the way for East Carolina with 17. Badian had 14. But more importantly, Marquette headed into a tournament with a measure of momentum gunning out a big victory here at the Bradley Center. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.